Welcome to the title game of the Gulf Coast Showcase featuring the 6-1 Iowa Hawkeyes, ranked number five in the nation, versus the K-State Wildcats at 6-0, ranked number 16 in the country. Kansas State will be in their white trim by purple. Iowa will be in their black with their gold trim. Iowa led by the National Player of the Year, last year's sweep of the awards, Caitlin Clark, number 22. It was a famous number in this arena. There's a lot of 22s in here. Caitlin Clark comes in, one of the top scorers in the nation at 29.3 points per game, nearly seven boards and nearly eight assists. And for K-State, they're led on the inside by the only double-figure scorer in 6-6, Aoka Lee, number 50 in white. K-State won a matchup between these two 10 days ago. I'm Debbie Antonelli along with Marin Walseth, and we're gonna bring you the first half action here in Estero Beach, Florida, as Iowa controls the tip. What an exciting game. We don't often see a rematch in the non-conference. You know, Iowa's out for a victory to revenge their previous loss, and K-State wants to continue on their winning ways. Molly Davis with the drive and drops it off inside to Sharon Goodman for the second consecutive night, gets the start. Hannah Stolke, not available to play, suffered an injury on night one of this tournament. Debbie, Which, that it's going to be an interesting matchup inside. And behind the screen, that is number three, Jalen Glenn with a triple. Caitlin Clark with the basketball handling up top, off the Goodman screen to the mid range. Clark off the front iron. K State's going to have to decide how they want to handle that ball screen. Aoka Lee does not typically come out to defend the ball screen, but when Caitlin Clark's involved, you have to. Ooh, Molly Davis with a beautiful spin move. The kick outside. That shot is long, but it's tracked down by the senior, Kate Martin. Clark on top. Step back, three. Rattles in and out. K-State with a rebound. Gabby. Gregory for K-State. I think she's the X factor. She plays tough, can hit the outside shot, mixes it up on the boards, and the extra hustle on the other end. Good footwork on the inside. Good fill behind the penetration. And here's Lee with a drop off inside to Glenn. Rebound Goodman. The Hawkeyes are running. Clark dribbles it to Marshall. Wide open for a triple. Ooh, she doesn't get that many good looks. Like wide open for Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark's going to have to shoot a better percentage than she did in their first meeting to get a different result. That's right. Two for 16 from the three-point line. It's actually one of the worst offensive performances Caitlin has had at an Iowa uniform. Last time she shot it that poorly outside the arc was against Duke in 2021 where she went one for 13. And you know she's a better scorer and a competitor. She's not going to let that happen again. But her teammates are stepping up. Little Molly Davis with the teardrop. 
Molly Davis already getting inside the K-State defense a couple of times for buckets for the Hawkeyes. Iowa with a one-point lead. Inside the lead, turnaround jump shot, in and out, rebound Hawkeyes. It's Molly Davis on the push. This is Kate Martin, the senior. Iowa made 23-point buckets last night against Florida Gulf Coast. Good D by the K-State. We're inside seven on the shot clock. Clark rejects the screen and gets to the paint, and she's going to draw a foul. And that is going to be foul number one on the 6-6 center for Kansas State, Aoka Lee. She's been in foul trouble this entire tournament. I don't feel like we've seen her best low post skills. And she's going to be so important, taking advantage of the less experienced, not necessarily less talented, but the less experienced interior play of Iowa with Hannah Solke not playing tonight. Caitlin Clark with a first free throw. Caitlin, a 78% free throw shooter, knocks down the second. This is Sunny Sundell or Serena Sundell, excuse me, passes inside. Good post and seal on the interior. Aoka Lee with a bucket. Debbie, I know you like scores, you like shooters, and I certainly like post play. We've got a lot to talk about tonight. <laughs> Gabby Marshall on the skip for three. Gabby Marshall has really found her stroke here in Florida. Known for her three-point shooting ability, just hadn't been shooting it well until this tournament. Serena Sundell in that matchup with Kate Martin. That's one to keep your eye on. Gabby Gregory trying to back down Marshall. Sharon Goodman with a block on Aoka Lee. Caitlin Clark coming off the Goodman screen. Gets at Aoka Lee and goes right to the hole and attacks Aoka Lee, who's going to be leery of having already won one foul. Wise of Iowa to involve Lee in the ball screen, knowing she's got that foul that she doesn't like to come out of the paint. Another pass inside, this time a dig by Clark. I thought Iowa played really good defense last night to combine with their three-point shooting, and they're going to need a good defensive effort tonight against K-State. This is Clark with a skip. Iowa's so good at making one more. And K-State's tempo is an issue here. They want to make sure that they take advantage of opportunities like this. Otherwise, they want to use some clock. Good take to the bucket by Sundell. I'm impressed with the composure and the pace that Sundell plays with. She really is calm, a taller guard, able to see over the outstretched active hands of her defenders. Look at Molly Davis turning the corner. Another floater. When you are an undersized guard, you have to have all those skills in your bag. I like to say they've been undersized their whole time, their whole life. We think it's an anomaly. They've been doing it forever. Yeah, she's been uh, one of the most improved players in a Hawkeye uniform this year. Aoka Lee gets a pass inside and kicks. Again, good defense that time by Clark, moving her feet. This is Gregory trying to back down Kate Martin. Rebound by Martin, another good defensive stance. And there's the advance pass to Davis who gets fouled in transition by Braylon Glenn. Jalen and Braylon, twins. Just there too late as Molly Davis attacks the rim in transition. Iowa State, Iowa up 13 to seven on Kansas State.
Back in the first quarter, Iowa with a 13-7 lead. Let's throw it over to the third member of our broadcast team, Bailey Smith. So tonight and this entire weekend, you've seen three of the starters for Kansas State on this court. Every single game, you've seen Serena Sundell and then twins Jalen and Briley Glenn all dominate on this court. But what's funny is they actually go way back further than just playing at Kansas State. In sixth grade, twins Jalen and Briley walked into a club practice and who else shows up but one of their rivals from the past couple of seasons, Serena Sundell. They were on the same AAU team and from then on out, they played all the way throughout high school and all committed to Kansas State together. Guys? I'll tell you, head coach Jeff Mitty, who has done a terrific job building the Kansas State program, uh, a representative of the Big 12, is a perennial NCAA tournament team. And they start off this game, Marin shooting three for 10 from the floor, one for three outside the arc as Molly Davis makes the first. One of the things that Jeff Mitty told me before the basketball game was that tempo was really important and they wanted to limit Caitlin Clark's ability to distribute and keep her off the free throw line. If she was going to go off outside the arc, they didn't want anybody else to do so. And that will be uh, Addison O'Grady who checks into the basketball game for Sharon Goodman, picks up the foul. Attack, aggressive attack there by Maupin turning the corner, forcing the issue, and then being rewarded at the foul line. Eliza Maupin plays about seven minutes a game. And this would be her first trip to the free throw line this season. That's an important bucket as K-State can't let this Iowa lead balloon. This is Offalter who enters the game at, off the last timeout. Offalter with the drive. Good spin move into the body of Glenn and she'll pick up the foul. This would be Jalen Glenn's first personal foul. Team three. Sydney Offalter, such a impact punch coming off the bench for Lisa Bluter and these Iowa Hawkeyes. Has range, has the build to take the physicality, certainly can play defense at a high level. What a luxury to have somebody like that coming off your yeah, bench. I think she brings a tremendous amount of toughness. You gotta have depth in the D1 uh, level to be able to advance further into your conference play and tournament play. This is Ziana Walker trying to feed it inside. Good hands. Turnover. Caitlin Clark from way downtown. Count it, baby. That is deep. I'm going to have to get my tape measure out in the first quarter. Are you kidding me? Debbie, she was closer to us than she was to the basket. Well, that gets the Hawkeye fans on their feet. And look at Sundell comes right down and gets a tough two in the paint. Just so composed. Not rattled by the big shot. Wants the ball in her hands. Inside to O'Grady, good play inside. That's Maupin with the block. Maupin came in, we're gonna see her come swat that into the first row. But talk about a role player coming off the bench, giving Aoka Lee a breather, did her job very well. Fryer back into the game. Gabby Marshall will take a seat for Iowa. Kaitlin Clark from behind the screen. Extra effort by a falter. However, her foot was on the baseline, allowing Kansas State here an opportunity to cut into their nine point deficit. To your point, Marin Sundell, just such good command of the offense behind the Lee screen. Offalter with a rebound. Here comes Clark. Look how far you got to come out and cover. There's a reason why she shoots logo three. She spaces the floor, and her vision is really underrated. O'Grady with the screen. Clark throws a drift pass into the baseline. Offalter looking inside for O'Grady. 
The skip, four on the shot clock. Fewer back just short with the, the shot, and again, Sundell, here she comes. This is Walker. This is Sanchez, who's played well in this tournament. She has. Iowa with the switch. Inside to Lee, who turns over that right shoulder and draws the foul on O'Grady. This will be O'Grady's second foul. Team third. And Sharon Goodman is back in quickly. Let's give Serena Sundell credit there for using the dribble to create a better passing angle for that one-on-one -on, -one on the block. Many players try to make it on a straight line more challenging. Aoka Lee misses the first. She's an 83% free throw shooter. She gets to the line a lot. She is really tough in a one-on-one -on -one coverage. She misses both. It's uncharacteristic. This is Walker on Clark. Molly Davis turning the corner again with the floater. She's having no trouble getting inside the K-State defense. When Caitlin Clark, nice hands, but when Caitlin Clark commands that much attention and the defense has to be that close. Driving lanes are wide open for other Iowa Hawkeyes. Molly Davis takes a seat. You're back with a steal, or excuse me, I'll falter with a steal. Here comes Clark, crossover, step back for three. It's good. Keep in mind, she only made two triples in the loss to K-State 10 days ago. She's got two triples in the first quarter. She's a competitor. Walker turned the corner, high off the glass, great take. 10 point Iowa lead. Goodman screen to the deep corner. Bierbach with a three. That is Iowa's fourth triple here in the first quarter. 25 to 12, the Hawkeye lead, the largest lead so far in the game. And the silence to crowd is Ziana Walker. I've been very impressed with Walker, her composure, her ability to score at the rim, and clearly we're seeing her range as well. Iowa will hold for the last opportunity. They're gonna go one four low. Oh, I thought Caitlin was gonna pull that one from 35. 10 on the shot clock. Clark to the mid range, drops it off inside to Goodman. Great vision by Caitlin Clark. And that will end the quarter. Iowa 27, K-State 15. Caitlin Clark leading all scorers with 10 first quarter points on two triples and a couple of free throws. She already has three assists in the first quarter.
Welcome back to Estero Beach for the Gulf Coast Showcase title game. In the 10th year of the championship, every major program has been through here and has won a, a big championship. So having K-State and Iowa State playing, or Iowa, excuse me, playing for the championship is um, really fun. Iowa State has won this event a couple of years ago. And uh, Iowa comes off to start the second half in a zone, or start the second quarter in a zone. Sanchez with a drive, gets in the paint with a half hook. Sharon Goodman with a rebound. Clark with an advanced pass. Turnover. That would be the first turnover for Iowa in the game. And Walker with a nice reverse. Cuts the lead to 10. Lisa Bluter last night in the win over Florida Gulf Coast got win number 500 in her career at Iowa, the head coach for Iowa. And Caitlin Clark with the left, gets in the paint and scores. 12 points for Caitlin Clark to lead all scores. Where's the help side there for K-State? I understand there's a shooter in the corner, but you might, must make it more difficult for Caitlin Clark. Gabby Marshall with a dig. Sharon Goodman battling inside with Aoka Lee. And there's a steal by Clark. Oh, and she blows the layup. She can't believe it. The fans come, here can't believe it. Comes back up the court with a smile on her face. This is a three by Gabby Gregory. And that's going to be a foul on number 11. Taryn Sides. Just rolls, a little strong, just rolls around. <laughs> she didn't miss many of those. She does not. <laughs> She's still smiling about it. <laughs> Like she knows we're talking about yeah, her. Yeah, she knows we're talking about her. <laughs> Another high ball screen. Sharon Goodman posting up big inside. One-on-one -on -one coverage. That looked like an isosceles triangle. Clark, take the step back for three. Front rim, Sanchez with a rebound. What a luxury for both of these squads to have interior players that can post, but they can also pass out to their guards or if they're double teamed. Aoka Lee working for position, and when she gets two feet in the paint at the front of the rim, Marin, forget about it. And she does a great job of keeping the basketball high, not using dribbles. She's so efficient with her post moves. K-State opportunity on a baseline out of bounds here. Being aggressive at the rim, Gabby Gregory. That's a weight room bucket by Grab G Gabby Gregory. That's her first basket of the game. Here comes Clark, off to Martin. Molly Davis turning the corner again. Bounces it back out. This is to Clark. Spin move on the right side. Good defense by Walker. Moves her feet and stays in between Clark and the basket. I think Clark was expecting the contact, and Walker did a great job of creating space. Gregory with a handoff. Walker the transfer from Louisville. It's Gregory dumping it inside to Aoka Lee. High off the glass, count it, and the foul. Aoka Lee off her, over that right shoulder. And the 83% free throw shooter will go back to the line where she missed two earlier, which was uncharacteristic of her. With the substitution, Sharon Goodman goes out for Iowa. Are they gonna go zone? How are they gonna match up with the smaller lineup while Lee is still involved? That's two personal fouls on Sharon Goodman where we might not see her the rest of the half, and Lee misses another free throw. Iowa battles on the glass. It's gonna stay K-State's basketball. Great extra effort there by Sanchez. And then you saw the emotion. She knows what's at stake. She's trying to get the momentum that going the K-State way. Sanchez for a deep two. And K-State has chipped away from 12 points. They've cut it down to six. Martin on top to Marshall. Okay. 
Martin to Davis, who drives to the middle. You can't over-penetrate against Aoka Lee, but there she is standing in the lane to alter your shot. Here comes Sanchez. Lee reverses it to Gregory for three, and it's short. Here comes Iowa. You made a good point there, Debbie. Lee can alter so many shots, and those don't get picked up in the stat sheet. Yes, block shots do, but how many shots does she alter in the paint? Her presence is always felt. Oh, there's a good steal by Glenn. And here's an example of pace right here. Not trying to push. You got a little bit of a size advantage, and that's going to be way off by Sanchez. Maybe too quick. I don't like a shot on the first pass. Not contested, not off balance. Give Lee a shot. Give Lee a touch. Shoot it on the way out. Oh, Falter checks back in. Caitlin Clark back in the lineup. Multiple defenders on Clark already in the first half. Keeping different people on her so she's not accustomed to the same length, the same speed. Off Alter with a handoff. Here comes Gabby Marshall. Back to Molly Davis. Good kick to the corner. Davis for three. Gregory with a rebound. Sundell with a reverse to Gregory for three. She got it. Do you like that quick shot, Debbie? Time out, Iowa. K-State has cut what was a 12-point lead in the first quarter down to a one-possession game here in the second. Back in the second quarter, K-State cuts the lead to three. Iowa coming off the timeout. Let's see what their ATO looks like. This is Clark. Off alter with, a try, with a, the drive, and it's blocked at the rim by Lee. Sundell up the floor. Good spacing by K-State in transition. Gregory drops it off to Lee. That's a bucket. Count it. Lee. To, Terrific secondary work by K-State. And Lee in transition, often we see her back to the basket. Marshall from the left wing, that's off. I like Iowa's idea there, bring Lee outside the paint, force her to guard a ball handler with no true five on the floor. It's Sydney Offalter right now. Clark to inbound. Good D by K-State. That was almost a five-second count. Marsh, this is um, Kate Martin. Good D inside by Gregory. Stands her right up. Caitlin Clark with a step back. It's good! Caitlin Clark with her third triple. 15 points to lead all scores. 
There's a lob inside to Lee. And without a true post player, Lee is wide open inside against the Iowa defense. Not a problem if Iowa can continue to score. Gabby Marshall. Can you take advantage of Lee on this end of the floor? Offense looks a little stagnant here for Iowa. Seven on the shot clock. Did she get it off in time? I think she did. Count it. The officials count it. Molly Davis has been fantastic off the bounce all first half. Picking apart Lee in that ball screen. Lee at the elbow. Wide open is Sanchez. That will go out of bounds. Back to Iowa. Coming into the game for Iowa is McCabe, Taylor McCabe, who hit seven triples off the bench yesterday against Florida Gulf Coast. Now keep in mind, Iowa hit 20, which is a school record, 20 threes. It was definitely raining threes in here. Martin in the pinch. She's gonna drive it on Gregory. The turnaround jumper is good. Kate Martin, the reliable senior. She just fills in the gaps. When they need a bucket, when they need to stop, she'll play post defense. She's saddled with being up against Lee on the defensive end now. Sundale has a size advantage over Molly Davis. The skip over the top of the Iowa defense. What a great find by Serena Sundell. Bucket by Glenn. A shorter point guard cannot see that skip pass. I love the tempo that Jeff Mitty's team has put on the floor. It's allowed them to get back in this game. Now Gabby Gregory will take a chance on Caitlin Clark. Clark with a little ball fake through the legs. The spin in the paint, the skip. Off alter for three. Rebound. K-State, they run the floor so well and so wide. Glenn for three. Clark with the board. Five on four. This is Martin with a nifty dribble through the lane to McKay. Does she still have the hot hand? And that's going to be a foul on Sydney Offalter. That's the third team foul for Offalter. That is her first. K-State will set up a half court opportunity here, but going back to their transition, their pace, the spacing that they create allows Lee the space she needs on the inside and the pitch back or the walk up threes. Zone by Iowa. Martin battling Lee inside. You got to try to sit on top of that, and that's a great job by Kate Martin getting off the contact. Here comes Clark. Off alter in the corner. No offensive rebounds. Neither team gets a lot, really. I mean, that is just the. K-State has one and Iowa has three, but neither team known for that. Well, Elfalter is going to pick up a second foul. Back-to-back -back fouls. Again, Mar in the space of K-State, whether it's in transition or in the quarter court. They've got some size on the perimeter. Here's Sundell. She sticks a triple. That's the fifth triple for K-State in the game to match Iowa's five threes. Same out of bounds play, second option, same result. Kaitlin Clark with a drive in the middle and she's stripped to the basketball. We're gonna call it jump ball. Good hustle by both teams. Good D inside by K-State. So the possession arrow belongs to Iowa. 
54 seconds remaining in the half. This is uh, the first time the game has been tied according to stat broadcast. Here comes Clark off the out of bounds play. And that's gonna be a foul on Glenn. That's on Jalen. That'll be her second, team fifth. Excuse me, team third. Jalen Glenn uses her length very well as a perimeter, perimeter defender, talking with some other coaches who have had to scout against her. She's close enough to make you think, long enough to be in your space. All falter with the drive, kick behind to Davis for three, and that's good. Molly Davis with 11 first half points. She has been fantastic, bringing great balance to the Iowa offense. And K-State Sun Sundell will play for the last possession here. Just about a second differential between game and shot. Gregory to the middle, they throw that high low pass, that's impossible to defend, and I was gonna get another chance. Here comes Caitlin, crosses over in transition. And I was not gonna get a shot off. And that's going to end our first half in the championship game in the Gulf Coast Showcase. Iowa with a one point lead, 39-38. Bailey Smith is joined by Lisa Bluter here. All right, I got head coach Lisa Bluter here with me. All right, so you guys, the first quarter started out super hot. Second quarter, a little bit cooling off a little bit. What changed? Yeah, I mean, what you just said, it like we cooled off a little bit from three, maybe rushing a few too many shots. Um, I don't, I, I think we can reverse the ball better than what we're doing right now. But um, right now, they're putting down threes, and we're not, and that's how they got back in the game. The Kansas State defense has up, upped their game a little bit, too, as well. So how are you guys going to adjust to be prepared for that and shut them down? I mean, we have to look at back-to-back -back drives. So you can't drive once and expect to get something. We have to continue to keep going at them with back-to-back -back drives. What's going to be the talk during halftime to get them to change? I don't know yet. We'll find out. <laughs>
Welcome back to Hertz Arena and our championship game here at the Gulf Coast Showcase. Iowa 39, K-State 38. Debbie Antonelli has other tournament responsibilities and we are welcomed back with John Vitas. I miss you, Marin. How are you? I am great. I know you were sitting right here courtside. You didn't miss the action. You just missed my voice. <laughs> it was great to hear Debbie on the play-by-play, -play, a Hall of Fame broadcaster uh, taking over the mic for the first half. And boy, what a first half it was. Caitlin Clark already shooting it much better than she did the first time around against the Wildcats. Here is Marshall from the corner, comes up short. Martin gets in there for the offensive rebound and somehow flings it back to Marshall. Clark using the Goodman screen. Bounce pass to Goodman. Lefty layup, no good. Unlucky bounce. Goodman was out for a majority of that first half with foul trouble, and K-State was able to take advantage of Lee on the inside. Oh, probably the biggest factor as to, as there is Sundell with the lefty score. But probably the biggest reason that K-State won that game earlier this month, Caitlin Clark in that game, 9 for 32 from the field, 2 for 16 from 3. She's already made three threes in the first half of this game. Molly Davis, who's got the basketball now, was the story of the first game as she continues on her scoring rampage. A season-high 13 points already for Molly Davis, the Central Michigan transfer. Averaged 20 a game for the Chippewas a couple years ago. Lee turns and missed it. Iowa by one. Here's Clark. Step back three, side of the rim, no. Glenn has the board. We, Sundell on the right side. We talked in the first half about the pace of play that K-State operates best at. Taking their time, finding their All-American. No dribble, uses Goodman as that defender axis high off the glass. These teams trading the lead right now as Lee found the ankle. And it's K-State by one. Martin to the elbow, kicks to Marshall. Now Goodman. Ball is not moving as crisp as it was. Great angle by Davis to get that shot off. Goodman on the offensive glass, cleans it up. And that's, what's ha that's what having a solid, experienced big in for Iowa looks like. Sundell lobs, Goodman got position and knocks it out of bounds. Nice defensive possession there. As the offensive post player, you're looking to create contact. You want to keep that defender on your backside. Sharon Goodman did a nice job of releasing, getting around, getting the tip. Gregory lobs, there's Lee, a little bit further from the basket than usual. Gregory backs down her defender, kicks to Sundell. That one to the corner, Glenn for three, count it! Briley Glenn with her first field goal. Briley Glenn not known as a huge score. Her minutes fluctuate based on what the team needs. Made a big shot. Clark around the screen. Steps back from the elbow. Book it. A Cl steady dose of that ball screen that involves Aoka Lee is beneficial to Iowa. Lee does not want to get outside the paint. And she got pushed outside the paint, and the foul is called. Lisa Bluter can't believe it, and neither can these fans. <laughs> what did Lisa Bluter call this? Carver South? About, so a, I would say, a 10-to-1 ratio on the fans in this one. Maybe a spattering of Wildcats fans behind us, but almost entirely Hawkeyes fans here in this final. And there's been a substitution at center. Addison O'Grady back in for Sharon Goodman, who's picked up her third. We're going to see the spark. Eliza Moffin as well taking advantage, giving Lee a little bit of a break. Sundell to the corner. Walker had some space. And now gets it back up top to Sundell. She has been making it happen. Sundell stops in the lane, fades, missed it short. Rebound to Davis. Crosses over. Clark, left side, contested three. Oh, boy! Caitlin Clark from way outside. And a timeout from Jeff Mitty. He is going to try and stop this momentum as soon as he can. But watch this shot from Clark. In transition on the left side. 
Molly Davis finds the All-American All-Everything for a yet another three. John Vitas, Marin Walseth with you on Flow Hoops. It is time for our principal expert move of the game. When you take care of your team, they take care of business. Learn more at principal.com slash business. Let's be honest, John. There's more than one principal expert move already in this game. Let's see what they've got dialed up. Naturally, it's going to be that last transition three by Clay Caitlin Clark. It's hard to pinpoint where she thrives the most, but certainly in transition in the open floor and from deep. Boy, her range is endless. But every time Iowa seems like they're building a bit of a lead, K-State comes right back. You mentioned slowing the pace down. It's really not necessarily the, the slowest of paces, but it's also just more of a half-court game. When things start getting up and down, I feel like that really favors Iowa. K-State is choosy in their transition offense. They're not making risky plays. And that's because Sundell has such a great feel for the game and what the team and what the, what the game's calling for. And an offensive foul. Marshall hit the deck and earns the call. Eliza Moffin there. Caught moving on the screen. So Iowa by three, Clark will bring it up. Walker on her, she had success against Clark in the meeting last week. Martin lobs, O'Grady catches, count the two, and the foul. And Carver South comes to life. Take a look here, Addison O'Grady using that post move. Associate head coach Jan Jens Jensen does such a phenomenal job with the post play at Iowa. They're so efficient. Nobody needs to use the dribble. And without having to use the dribble, you're able to score a heck of a lot faster. Bailey Smith had a chance to catch up with Jeff Mitty coming out of the locker room. Guys, guys, I talked to Kansas State head coach Jeff Mitty coming out of the tunnel after half, and he said that he was really proud to see his team fighting back in that second quarter. They were getting a better shot selection. They said that in the first quarter, that's what really hurt their transition, which caused them to scramble from behind. But they needed to fix that and focus on that going forward to have the defensive transition organized much better. Guys. Thank High you, Bailey. High-level coaches here asking their teams to make some slight adjustments. Lisa Bluter mentioned ball reversal. Jeff Mitty's concerned about transition defense so that they're able to match up in the half court defensively. Clark once again will bring it up. Back up to a six point lead for Iowa. Walker in position. There's the kick to Marshall. The elevator screen was well defended by Sanchez. And lots of length against Marshall. Davis gives it up. Clark on an island. Five to shoot. Bounce pass. Martin. And going to be called for a travel. That shot will not count. That stems an eight to nothing run from the Hawkeyes in less than two minutes. I'm looking for Aoka Lee here to get a touch. Down six. Oh, a scoop shot by Walker, using the left. She's pumped up. Feeling good on the offensive end. Now, Naturally, players play a little harder on the defensive end. 
Red shirt freshman, a rising star. Clark from the wing comes up short off the hands of Lee. Rebound, John Vitas. <laughs> that was coming right at us. We've got uh, too much valuable ex equipment to lose down here on our flow hoop setup. Timeout on the floor, 51-47. Hawkeyes out in front in our Gulf Coast Showcase Championship game. As we welcome you back to the Gulf Coast Showcase, let's check in again with Bailey Smith. Guys, there's a reason that this Iowa team has so much chemistry on the court. Not only have most of them played together growing up, but they also do everything together now. They all live in the same apartment building, and they all go on vacation together during their breaks to one of their manager's lake houses and do all of the lake house things. But also get this, they love to do sing-alongs together. They love uh, during their shoot arounds and in their locker room to just belt out the best music, including High School Musical during their Elite Eight trip and also Straight Up by Paula Abdul. Guys? <laughs> the people that say you only have to respect your teammates, you don't have to get along with them, that's a bunch of, I don't agree. I don't agree with that at all. Championship teams actually love to spend time together. They're each other's best friends. They're around each other all the time. That chemistry is so important. That's a fun one <laughs> from, our, from Bailey Smith down on the sidelines. You can tell both these teams very well connected and that's why they played at such a high level this early in the season. Martin, bounce pass, Clark, doesn't need much space, gets inside the arc, beautiful pass, O'Grady drops it in, plus the foul, Clark with vision. Clark's little hesitation there. Bought O'Grady another second to position herself. Great two-man game. When Clark's eyes are on the rim, everybody's attention goes to her, and she used that to her advantage right there. Naturally, as fans, we all follow the basketball, but watching Caitlin Clark after she delivers a dime is just as exciting as watching her hit a deep three. She loves a good pass. So Iowa has built up a seven point lead. They led by double digits midway through the first half. Walker changing direction in on Clark, missed it. Terrific move, but couldn't score. Martin for three, she got it! Kate Martin knocks it down, and Iowa leads by 10. Miscommunication, or perhaps lack of communication on that screen by K-State. Taryn sides looking to match, that's no good. Gregory snatches the offensive rebound. There was a whistle, we couldn't hear it, but the play has come to a stop. Apparently the whistle was blown on Iowa based on the crowd's reaction. <laughs> Deafening inside Hertz Arena. Hockey home of the Florida Everblades, minor league affiliate of the Panthers. But it's amazing how quickly Iowa can put points on you. Short pass to Gregory, sides, dribbles, uses the screen. There's Lee. Gives it up. Gregory thinking about it. Got stuck, pushed off the spot, but finds sides. Short shot clock here. Two to shoot, Walker's got a heave, got it off in time, but missed it. And the rebound to Iowa. Clark looking to push, snaps one ahead. O'Grady receives, digs. Clark open for three, no. <laughs> Side slithers in there for the board, oh boy. Hawkeyes moving the ball with, in a hurry. And K-State dodged a bullet that in that one. Still only a 10 point game as Lee finds herself one on one in the block, finishes that time using the dribble. 
but still very efficient in the paint. Every time Iowa has seemed like they're on the verge of blowing it open, K-State responds with a quick bucket. Clark on the dribble, snaps one to the corner. A falter gives it up, and they'll reset. Clark sizing up Sanchez into the corner. The three is good. Another one for Martin. Caitlin Clark draws so many eyes and so many hands. All it takes is the def help defender to be two feet out of position, and she's able to drop a dime. Listen to this crowd. It's a turnover. Backcourt violation and a dead ball to the Hawkeyes. Sundell will come back in. They've been a little bit lost without her. They need the steady Eddie. Serena Sundell, they need the defensive stopper and Jalen Glenn. And this feels like Iowa City. This is a big possession. And a big two minutes here for Kansas State. Screen from O'Grady, they couldn't get it back to her, back to Clark now. Nice defense there by K-State on the initial action. They leave Clark on an island again with Walker. Gets it back, Clark in the lane, ripped away by Walker. Walker stayed in the play, picked up the basketball. Snaps one to Glenn, she'll tee it up. Missed it short, rebound secured by a falter. Here comes Clark. Other way to Marshall, leads her to the corner. Walker staying with Clark. A falter, hands to Davis, or did she? That could have been a double dribble. Marshall uses the screen, pulls up for two, no. Sanchez the rebound. Sundell's in here to manage the pace and flow. Which she has done quite well. Mm -hmm. Nine points, four assists, four rebounds for Sundell. Walker has to kick. Lob inside, Lee turns, banks it up, and in! Ioka Lee with a chance for a three-point play. Again, again, Sundell uses the dribble to create a great angle. Makes the game very easy for her post player. The helper was just a little bit late. I think that was Davis coming from the other side. Now Lee is an advantage against anyone that K-State plays. And she is up to 17 points on 8 of 11 shooting. A falter will come out. Davis will send it to Clark. Iowa by eight, final minute of the third quarter. Clark fades for three. Bucket, Caitlin Clark pushing Iowa towards a championship. Great decision. Use that ball screen. K-State has not made an adjustment. Lee right back at him, doesn't get the roll. O'Grady's got it, and Clark will control. 23 for Clark. By Iowa, I'm doing the same thing. High ball screen, involve Lee until K-State makes a change. You don't get many chances to hoist trophies before New Year's. <laughs> Iowa playing like they really want it. And also trying to get that revenge from their loss earlier in the month. Clark gives it up. Wide open look, no good. Martin had the look. Here comes Sundell, two seconds. Sundell on Marshall, turns. Lobs it up there and got the roll. That ball stopped on the heel of the rim and fell on in. They're going to take a look and make sure that went down in time. But what a heads up play for Serena Sundell. Stopped initially. Again, I think her height plays to her advantage there. Her higher release, able to get a shot up over the scrambling Iowa defenders. You are seeing what the officials are seeing here at Hertz Arena. And they will count that. So Sundell will get the bucket and we will step aside. Nine point lead for the Hawkeyes looking to hoist the trophy when we come back.
We welcome you back to the Gulf Coast Showcase Championship game here on Flow Hoops. I'm John Vitas alongside Marin Walseth. That bucket by Sundell keeps it in, the, in single digits. It feels like K-State still's got a sliver of a hope here. Emotionally, that's a, that's a big deal for these K-State Wildcats to look at the scoreboard. They can get a stop and a score. Clark, though, is doing her thing. 23 points and six assists. And a foul underneath, away from the ball. It's going on Maupin. It's been a tough night for Maupin. There's Clark curling around, bounce pass to Marshall. Open for three, in and out. Offensive rebound, Martin. Davis with it, crosses over on Sundell. Beautiful pass, lefty layup. Goodman is there. Really smart play, easy pass. Great finish. Terrific offense from the Hawkeyes. Glenn shovels to Sundell. Glenn to the baseline. Sanchez puts it on the deck. Turns, deals, caught by Walker, deflected, knocked around. Here comes Clark, off the turnover, pushing in transition. Brings the defense into the corner. Marshall to Martin, gets around Sundell and draws the foul. It'll be on the floor against K-State. Good one more pass there by Gabby Marshall to find Kate Martin in the corner. Because she's such a great three-point shooter, it's a hard closeout. Great job reading the poor closeout and attacking the basket. Clark looking for a teammate. Bounce pass with Goodman. Gives it back to her. Into a double coverage. Pulled away by Sundell. We've got a jump ball. It'll go to the Wildcats. So the Wildcats bring it up. Sundell on the right wing gives it to Glenn. They're trying to get it to Lee. Sundell will take it instead, and she buries it. Clark with it. Defended by Walker. Gets downhill. Clark all the way in. Banks it up. No good. Gets her own miss, though. And a reset for the Hawkeyes. Martin for three. Short. Sanchez the rebound. Sundell has it. Let's check in with Bailey, who was in the huddle with the K-State Wildcats. During the quarter break, right before the fourth quarter, in the Kansas State huddle, they're talking about their main focuses going into this final 10 minutes. The obvious things, like focusing on not fouling, but then also things like defending the ball screen and seeing how they can really cool off Caitlin Clark in this next quarter. But also they wanted to play at their own pace, which is what they did at Iowa when they beat the Hawkeyes last week. Guys? Clark draws the foul there and will go to the free throw line. This seems like a really mature team for Jeff Mitty. They won't be phased by this situation, but it is starting to become a deficit that you have to play close to perfect basketball the rest of the way as Clark converts on the first. Their experience and their age allows them to be very mature. And talking with their staff, they weren't going through a lot of drills and having to teach a lot because of the experience and just how smart his, his team was. They've done a lot of playing in this, in the practices in the non-conference, trying to find the right group together. Clark stretches it to 10. Walker had it stripped for a moment by Clark as Sundell has to leap for it. Snaps one the other way. Walker thought about it. Glenn gets it instead. Sanchez lobs for Lee. Lee draws the foul and will go to the free throw line herself. the first meeting that K-State won. We're taking a look at the replay here of Aoka Lee. Drawing the foul, getting herself to the foul line. John, in the first meeting, Lee had 22 and 12. Right now she's got 17 and six. Uncharacteristic miss. 
from the foul line where she's an 80% foul shooter. I bring those numbers up to say K-State needs to pound the basketball inside. Iowa does not have an answer for Lee when she gets two feet underneath the hoop. Well, tonight, as we've got a conversation between Lisa Bluter and the officials, tonight Lee has missed 80% of her free throws. Small sample size, one for five, but it's quite shocking. I'm not. You know what Coach Bluter is so upset about here? The, the fans were upset before they even called that foul, so maybe just some hand-checking underneath trying to get free. Jan Jensen holds a lot of roles on this team, most known for her post-play coaching and mentorship, but certainly she's also the cop when it comes to interfering between Coach Bluter and the referees. And these fans here in Southwest Florida trying to get behind their Hawkeyes. Clark got stuck with it. Under seven minutes to play. Iowa by 10. Davis backs up. Finds O'Grady. Now Clark. Walker all over. Clark turns the corner. Gets it inside. O'Grady missed the layup. That's impossible to defend. The open side, ball screen, no help. O'Grady's got to finish that. And she's had that opportunity a few times and converted, but not that time. Walker ahead of steam and a foul before that layup. It's going to go against Iowa. I think they got Clark. Clark's not contending the foul. A little yeah. too physical on the ball screen defense. Not a bad foul because Walker might have had a layup there had there not been a whistle. And only the second here of the quarter. And her first. There's Lee. Oh, boy. They're making it tough for her to catch the ball. Back out to Sundell. Down the baseline. Sundell leans in and scores. O'Grady chose to jam the roll as obviously Lee is extremely potent coming off a ball screen. And Marshall barely kept out in the front court. Clark splits the D, trying to go around Lee, but missed it. Great move, but a little too strong. Sundell pushing tempo a little bit. Snaps one to Glenn, and now back to Sanchez. Hawkeyes get back. Walker at the top of the key. Lee needs a touch. And a three-second call against Ioka Lee. And the crowd loves it. Lee works her tail off, ran the floor, found herself in perfect position. Wildcats, get your All-American the basketball. She has delivered when given the opportunity. Clark spots up, no. That was a really good look. Almost too open. It's almost like she needs someone leaning all over her. Sundell to Lee, there it is. Gives it back to Walker. Walker all the way through, easy two. Same play, a ball screen, and O'Grady is choosing to jam the screen. Not a bad move on her part, but where does the help on the ball handler come from? A good job by Walker to read the situation with Lee drawing a ton of attention. Clark from long range, no. Heat check for Caitlin Clark, who's now eight for 22. And she was 9 for 32 in the loss last week. So she's shooting it better, but has got a little bit cold here in the fourth. Final five minutes. There's the lob. Lee jumped and missed it off the backboard. I don't know if she needed to necessarily do that. I don't think she needed to almost alley-oop a post move, but that demonstrates her athleticism for sure. And concerned about Iowa crashing and trying to score quickly. Davis looking around, Clark comes to the ball. And now circles out of the corner. Around the back dribble, Clark gives it up. O'Grady the baseline, Jay, no good. Rebound to Walker. Both teams have gone quiet. Sundell down the lane, lost it, and it is Iowa ball. That'll take us to our final media timeout of the night. 4.13 to play. Iowa up by five, looking to win the Gulf Coast Showcase Championship when we return.
We're in the security business. Our job is to help people feel safe. Not only our customers, but those who matter most to them. Just like our company does for us. We have great benefits from principal, so I know I'm taken care of. And not just me, but the ones who matter most to me. We welcome you back to the Gulf Coast Championship game here on Flow Hoops. Iowa with a five-point lead. K-State has started to chip away as Iowa has not scored for three minutes and 21 seconds. Marin Walker for the Wildcats has now scored double digits in both matchups against Iowa. She's been an X-factor for her team. She's a tough cover with her athleticism, her length. She can shoot the three, she can get at the rim. Comes up with the steals in the right place at the right time. The ball handling, she's able to push the pace. And they're going to call her for a travel. I thought she might have gathered that ball in midair. Coach Mitty asking for an explanation. But it'll be a turnover on Walker after she got the steal on the other end. That was only the sixth turnover for Iowa. They have taken really good care of the basketball. There's a lob inside. Goodman catches, but missed the layup. Sundell is there to clean things up. Ahead it goes. Glenn to Gregory, and now they'll reset. Final three and a half minutes here at the Gulf Coast Showcase. Sundell all the way through. Sidesteps the defense. Missed the layup and kicks. Gregory spots up. Bang! Two-point game. What a role player. She averaged 18 and a half last year. has been asked to have a different role, embracing it well, coming up big. 8.7 assists for Gabby Gregory. Here's Clark all the way through. Over the defense, no good. Sanchez the rebound, and K-State can tie or take the lead. It's an 8-0 run in only four minutes for the Wildcats. Sundell kicks. Sanchez can shoot it. She drives past Goodman, lays it in, plus the foul. K-State can take the lead with a free throw. Look at this drive by Sanchez. Beats Goodman off the dribble. That's Sharon Goodman's fourth personal foul, which is in initiating a substitution. Yeah, Goodman is done. The fans will give her a nice round of applause, but now it's on O'Grady to try and defend these bigs for K-State. Lee is out of the game at the moment. Sanchez's free throw is pure, and Kansas State has the lead. Two thirty-six to go. This crowd a little bit shell-shocked. Martin on the dribble. Around Sanchez, banks it in. Iowa back in front. What more could you ask for? Sundell holding the composure, using the horn set, flare screen. Sanchez. Screen, flare screen. No good. Nice little set there, but nothing doing. And Iowa can extend it now up by one. Clark will take control. One-on-one -on -one with Sanchez. Oh, she thought about it, then lost the dribble, but keeps her dribble now. Under two minutes to play. Clark has to kick. Davis drawing attention. Clark with some space. Tees one up. Oh, yeah! Caitlin Clark 
extends it to a four point lead. Well timed bucket for the best player in the nation. Walker has to give it up. K State needs some points and a foul. Are you looking to maybe get Lee back in the game here? She has been on the bench for K-State here in crunch time. I think part of the issue with Lee is the ball screen offense that Iowa has been using to kind of pick her apart. However, on the offensive end, Lee is your money maker. She's the one that's going to get you the easy two as she checks back in for Walker. Yeah, she is going to play here against Martin. They lob to Lee, but all the way out in the corner. Resets to Gregory, and they'll set up. Not a lot of time left with all of a sudden K-State down by four again. Sundell around Lee. Kicks to Sanchez. They get it to Lee. Double team comes. Three to shoot. Sundell in the lane. Lefty layup. She's got it. Just before the buzzer. Talk about composure by Serena Sun Sundell. A two-point game with one minute to go. Clark and the Hawkeyes looking for the knockout punch, and Coach Bluter will use a timeout to try and draw something up to finally sink the Cats. Just a 30-second here. Iowa's got a deep playbook. Their most important component here is inbounding the basketball, not allowing a five-second call. Okay, State's going to play solid defense. No need to foul, but solid defense, and then they need to secure the defensive rebound. We want to give a big thanks to our sponsors here this week, Carr, Riggs, and Ingram, CPAs and advisors, helping us out all week long. And, of course, clean, simple eats. None of this possible without our corporate partners and uh, principal as well, helping us out all week long as this... Gulf Coast Showcase has come down to the wire. We had Debbie Antonelli on earlier. She will be doing the post-game interviews with the winning team tournament MVP as well. And she has been a big part of this event, which has brought in so many highly qualified ranked teams, and these two no different. Martin has the inbound. Clark comes to the ball with 16 on the shot clock. One more bucket here should give Iowa a good chance. Clark tees it up again. Clark, the haymaker. Fantastic shot by Caitlin Clark. Lob inside for Lee. Sundell down the baseline. Here's Lee. Tried to drop it. It's deflected. Davis has it. Clark comes to it, and now K-State has to foul. Clark gets fouled, and she will go to the line. 31 for the Naismith Player of the Year. That high ball screen, Lee's not coming out of the paint. Great call by Lisa Bluter. Not her most efficient performance, but when it mattered most, Caitlin Clark delivered. K-State needs to foul immediately. And there is the timeout from Davis. Iowa still has one more. K-State's got three of their four timeouts left, so Coaches will hit the whiteboards. K-State, of course, looking for a knockaway and a turnover. Iowa just trying to get it in, and then they'll get fouled. Still some time here, Marin, for K-State to try and come on all the way back here down by five. I think it starts with going for a steal, getting an aggressive trap, playing the passing lanes. But they can't let more than four or five seconds run off this clock before they foul. I feel like at some point in this equation, if K-State's going to win, there has to be a turnover. I don't know if they can rely on Iowa missing free throws. So we'll see what they have in store. Lee is in the game to guard the inbounder, Kate Martin. That it does two things for K-State. It allows them to switch every screen out on the floor, and it makes it a much more difficult pass for Kate Martin. Next foul will put Iowa in the bonus, as there's Clark. Burning a few seconds, and there is the foul. They took a little bit of time to see if she was going to pass, but she did not. And now Clark will have two free throws. Thirty-one points for Caitlin Clark. 
And a chance to tack on two more. First one misses short. I expect Caitlin Clark to make this foul shot and for K-State to call an immediate timeout to advance the basketball. She missed again. There's the timeout that will advance the basketball, as you said, Marin. And so now if you score, it's a one-possession game. Now the shot clock will be off, so I think you have to foul again no matter what. But still within the realm of possibilities that Kansas State could possibly pull this off. 29.6. So they're going to go into their ATO after timeout playbook as well as their end of game. Who are they going to look for? In my opinion, you're going immediately to Aoka Lee. Looking for an easy quick two. This is the third highest point total of the season for Caitlin Clark. Had 44 against Virginia Tech, 35 against Drake. And she has eclipsed the 30-point plateau here tonight. 31 points on seven made threes, and per usual, six assists as well. Five more made threes tonight than she had in their first meeting. Collectively, Iowa played faster. She, meaning Caitlin Clark, distributed the basketball and honestly just shot better. And yeah, there were times where Iowa got pretty stagnant early in this fourth quarter, and she had to shoot them out of a slump here in these final three minutes or so, and she certainly did. So Sanchez to inbound here on the near sideline. I'm looking for a pass from Sanchez right to Aoka Lee in the middle of the paint. Goes to Gregory first. They're trying to run a screen for Gregory. Now it's Lee at the top of the arc. Precious time ticking away. Gregory, a long one, missed it short. Davis got her hand on the rebound. And Davis, the smallest player on the floor, has the board. Molly Davis has been incredibly impactful for this Iowa Hawkeye team. 13 points, four rebounds, four assists. She had a key steal a couple possessions ago. Obviously comes up with the basketball there as well. So Coach Bluter uses another timeout. Iowa is now out of timeouts with 17.1 to go. Boy, when you're Iowa and players enter the transfer portal, I'm sure just about anyone would love to play for this program. So when you're Coach Bluter, you have the luxury of being selective. And clearly, despite she's a little bit undersized, they saw something in Molly Davis that made them believe that in these moments they could trust her to do a little bit of everything. Lots of credit to... Molly Davis for coming from Central Michigan where she was a 20 point a game score to taking on a very different role. Obviously it's very easy when you're coming into a championship caliber team on the national level, but it's still an adjustment and it takes a special player to come in, come in and be part of what's already going on. Officials are taking a look at the monitor here. So you are watching what they are watching. I would assume they're double checking who the foul is on and who is shooting the free throws, which we believe will be Davis. So a quick review there, just uh, crossing their T's and dotting their I's as we hit the final seconds. But I think Iowa added timeouts is something to know. K-State has two. But unfortunately, that, that set out of the timeout for K-State just didn't go very well. That wasn't necessarily the best shot by Gabby Gregory, but I give her a lot of credit for taking the shot when the offense, whatever the play was, was stalled. 17.4, it makes it a lot more challenging had they not got a shot up with 22, right. 25 seconds on the clock. Yeah, she knew they had already burned eight or nine seconds and couldn't afford to burn any more time, and so she let it fly. So I guess the timeout came before the foul because now they bounce it into Clark who plays keep away for a few seconds and then draws the foul. So she'll go right back to the free throw lot. Clark, the most recognizable name in the sport right now. Hawkeyes had to take out an extra page in the game notes just to list her accolades. First one is perfect. K-State does have two timeouts remaining. 
Missed it short. Rebound to Gregory, and there's the timeout. That'll advance the ball with 13.6 on the clock. So these teams taking it possession by possession. The miss there, though, keeps it at a two-score game. So this has to be a three, right? With 13.6, I think you look for a three if they've contested the three because of switching on the screen. You, you go inside to Lee immediately, and then obviously you look to foul. And maybe try and jump a passing lane on the subsequent inbound pass if you can. I'm curious to see if K-State sticks with the same ATO since it clearly wasn't run correctly or if they go flip the page onto number two. So Sanchez to inbound from the same spot. They set up the same way here also. Gregory comes to the ball again. They lob for Sundell this time. Back to Sanchez. She puts up the three, missed it long, and there's the foul. That's going to go on Iowa. And so K-State will have two free throws with nine seconds remaining. Just when you think you've seen it all. <laughs> I don't think the rebounders planned on that hard carom off the backboard. Gregory has eight points and seven assists. And a chance to get to double figures right here. They need the points. First one, no good. Kansas State now just four for 10 from the free throw line. Missed it again. Sanchez over the back on the rebound, and that should do it. Two more free throws coming for Iowa. K-State needed those foul shots. And really no harm in Sanchez going for that offensive rebound, putting it in the referee's hands. Sometimes they call those, sometimes they don't. Marin, we'd be remiss if we didn't tip our cap to the staff here at Hertz Arena. 24 games over the last seven days. And it all culminates with this one. Lots of people involved to make this happen. It's been a pleasure working with you these last few days. Kate Martin at the foul line. 11 points, 10 rebounds, another solid double, double. Sundell gives it up. Gregory, three seconds, splits the defense or passes. Sundell at the buzzer, won't get it. And it's a seven point win for the Iowa Hawkeyes who avenge their loss against Kansas State and win the 2023 Gulf Coast Showcase. Great tournament and heck of a game between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the K-State Wildcats. It came down to execution and pace of play and Iowa was able to control both of those. Well, as K-State erased the deficit and actually took a one-point lead midway through the fourth quarter, Caitlin Clark takes over. Back-to-back -back three is really the difference. K uh, Iowa involved Aoka Lee in the ball screen. K-State refused to make an adjustment, and Caitlin Clark was able to find herself available and wide open at the top of the key late in the game, really extending the lead there for Iowa. We are going to be joined by Bailey Smith in just a moment. She will have an interview with a Hawkeye. And then Debbie Antonelli will carry the trophy presentation as the Hawkeyes thank their supporters here in Southwest Florida. But what a performance from Iowa. They were dominant in their first two wins, winning by 40-plus against Purdue, Fort Wayne, and Florida Gulf Coast. And this one did not come easy as the Wildcats came to play once again and win it 77-70. to Once again, Bailey will be with us here in just a moment as it looks like she'll have Kate Martin. John, when you break down the numbers, Iowa valued the basketball, only turning it over six times. Yeah, really well done, taking great care of the ball. And while we have a moment, let's send it over to Bailey Smith. 
All right, I'm here with Kate Martin. So this crazy game came down to the wire. What was it that got that final push to make you guys win? Um, yeah, I think we got some defensive stops, and then we knocked down some shots late in the fourth quarter. But really, it was just a team effort throughout the whole game. We never gave up. We played really hard, and that's what got us the win tonight. The, the game that you played against Kansas State a couple of weeks ago, do you think that that gave you any more fuel going into this one? Uh, definitely. Um, you never want to lose to the same team twice, and so, uh, you know, we watched the film on that, we learned from it, Coach Bluter had us prepared for this game, and so we're really happy that we came out with the win tonight. Three wins in three days. I'm sure you guys are exhausted, but how much does that mean for your program? Oh, it's, it means everything, and you know, this gets us ready for the end of the season. Big Ten tournament, it's the same thing, so, uh, you know, being able to practice this kind of preparation uh, at the beginning of the season will really help us at the end of the year. you got a lot of fans here. What would you want to say to them? Oh, thanks for showing up and showing out. It's pretty cool. Wherever we go, we have a lot of fans. So we kind of turn it into Carver South, so that's pretty cool to see. So thanks to all the fans who showed up. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Bailey. Great work uh, all week long by our sideline reporters, Max Tanzer, Amber Bepko, and Bailey Smith. As you see, the victorious Hawkeyes. Marin, this is one of the things they play for. Obviously, the more important accomplishments come in March and April, but this is about as sweet as it gets for November. And Kate Martin was absolutely right. This is a preparation, three games in three days. That's what the Big Ten tournament looks like. That's what the NCAA tournament looks like, quick turnarounds. Yes, and obviously the Big Ten tournament, a place where they've had a lot of success to look to do that again. And of course, expect to be seated very, very high. That loss against the Wildcats dropped them to number five in the country. But when this team is playing at full cylinder, they're a lot better than number five in the country. They've played fantastic these last two days without Hannah Stolke. Their reserve post players held it down. Hopefully she'll be able to make a comeback here soon. But talk about a team win, just like Kate Martin said, one person down, the next person stood up. Debbie Antonelli will be handling the post-game interviews here. We'll try and get her a microphone to carry those. I believe Coach Bluter referenced this place as Carver South, and we want to thank each one of you for being here. This is our 11th year here in Southwest Florida. I think if you ask the coaches and players, they would all tell you that the resort is absolutely outstanding. We love being here, and we're grateful to all of our sponsors and supporters for helping us make this a first-class experience for all the athletes and the coaches. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> Joining me at center court, BD Global Sports Executive Director Glenn Pfister. Glenn's right here. <laughs> tournament Director Jake Caverly and Assistant Tournament Directors Ty Schuerman and Rylan Gettings. Thank you all for everything you've done to make this a great experience for them, all the kids. Okay. None of this would be possible without the help of our sponsors. Nate read it all already, but I want to introduce to you Jeff Stainer from Miramar Outlets. He's the Vice President from Lee Health Foundation and Golisano Children's Hospital. I have Jason Puella. Guys, raise your hand so they know who you are. And then two of our biggest supporters and fans in women's basketball from Oklahoma, John and Sue Gibbs. All right, I'm going to announce the all-tournament team. Drum roll, please. No. From Florida Gulf Coast, Dolly Cairns. Way to go, Dolly. Had a great tournament. You guys are going to present, so move over here so you can help present, okay? All right, from uh, uh, Kansas State, Aoka Lee. From Kansas State, Serena Sundell. From the University of Iowa, Molly Davis. And 
And our most outstanding player, you can call her the MVP. I think you all can guess who this might be. Our winner happens to wear number 22 at the University of Iowa, Caitlin Clark. All right, Caitlin. 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 I didn't know you could interview me. <laughs> well, I, if you're going to be smart, I'm not going to ask you about missing all those free throws at the end of the game. <laughs> I got nothing to say. <laughs> Kate, I got you with. 29 the first night, 21 the second night, 32, 32, yeah, 32, okay. It's not bad. I made a free throw, it helped. Free throws help, but no. Thank you to all of you guys for coming and supporting us. Um, means the world to us. Yeah. Debbie for putting on, you know, a first-class tournament. Um, but no, this is what makes women's basketball so amazing, as all of you. So we thank you seriously. Um, whenever we go on the road, our crowds are incredible. Um, it's cool to see all the Hawkeye gear. We never take it for granted. So seriously, thank you to every single person that came out and supported us. Yeah, this is what makes women's basketball awesome. This is the energy we feed off of. I don't know if we win tonight if it isn't, if it isn't for you guys. So thank you for coming and supporting. I know a lot of you drove quite a bit to be here with us over the holidays. So thank you. You made it special. And uh, keep supporting us. It'll be a fun year. Thank you, Kate. Let me ask you just one question about the game, for real. Like, you had a double-digit lead. K-State kept chipping away. They got to a point where the game was really tight at the end. What gives you guys the resolve to be able to play together and pull away at the end? Yeah, it felt kind of similar to how we played them a week ago, as they made a little run at the end. But I thought, this time we were a little calmer um, at the end of the game. Um, we made some big shots, and you know they're a really good team. They're a top 25 team. Um, they're going to be really tremendous in the Big 12. Um, their size gave us some struggle on the inside, but you know I think we just responded whenever we could, and I think that just speaks to the maturity of this group. Um, we know we weren't going to put up 100 points tonight. They just play that good of defense, but um, you know however you have to win, you just find a way, and that's what Coach Bluter always says: just find a way. Um, and it doesn't really matter as long as there's W at the end of the day. Speaking of Coach Bluter, she got her 500th win at Iowa. Lisa, I know you love this group, and every time they get a chance, they share the love right back with you. Um, what gives you guys the incredible fire to be able to make this so exceptional for your fans, make it entertaining for everyone, and get your group to stay together and connected? Well, first of all, our fans are incredible, as you can see. I mean, there is nobody like a Hawkeye fan. It's they're unbelievable. So we made this into Carver South, huh? But, you know, I mean, everybody knows we've got a superstar on our team. We're thankful for that. But everybody has a role on this team, and everybody's important. And I think we've bought into that. There's not jealousies. We know how hard Caitlin works. And everybody understands that when her light shines, it shines on all of us. And we're thankful for that. And um, she just shoots till her arm falls off. Right, Debbie? Yes. Shoot till your arm falls off, Caitlin. Lisa, um, playing in events like this, obviously it's three games, three days. It's, it's a grind. Uh, the level of competition is stiff. It was tough. It wasn't an easy go. When you look at how this event um, how you played it and how it can help you move forward for the rest of your season. Yeah, when you play three games in three days, it's, it is very taxing on your body, physically, mentally, but it prepares us for the Big Ten tournament when we'll have to play three games in three days. So this is great preparation. You know, the shooting percentages for both teams were off a little tonight, 
that's to be expected in the third game in three days. But, uh, um, you know, it just gets us ready for the Big Ten tournament. And we love coming here and, and having the opportunity to come here to all of, all of our South, Southern Hawkeye fans. Well, we love having you in Southwest Florida. Thank you to you and your program for coming. Congratulations on winning the 2023 Gulf Coast Showcase. Thank you to all the sponsors again. Thank you, fans. What a marvelous champion. Congratulations to K-State. Good luck to them moving forward. And now we would like to present the championship trophy to the University of Iowa. Please accept the trophy. Oh, how fun was that to be a part of the celebration here on Flow Hoops. Big thanks to Debbie Antonelli for all she does with this great tournament, helping us out here on the broadcast as well. But uh, Marin, what a three days of basketball, and I don't think there could have been a better finish than what we saw here tonight. A superstar in Caitlin Clark playing like it here down the stretch. Really 12 fantastic games. Everybody learned something. Some kids scored more than others. Some people broke out of their shell, but great Three days for these Iowa Hawkeyes. Caitlin Clark and her squad. Lisa Bluter getting to 501 victories at Iowa. So much to be thankful for, as she said. And just the way that these ladies play. Great representation for women's basketball on a national stage. And Iowa is back on track after that small blip on the radar against K-State a couple of weeks ago. I know we want to thank Brooks Downing, Glenn Fister, Debbie Antonelli, and our entire Flow Hoops broadcast team that brought you these images over seven days, 24 games here on Flow Hoops. Marin, I know you'll be off to call your games up in the Northeast. I'll be bouncing around teams down here in Florida. It was great working with you. Hope to see you again next year. Likewise, John. Thank you so much for the opportunity. We all get better. We all grow.